This past week might have been dominated in the headlines by the return of the Ultimate Fighter and the fact that Conor McGregor is on it. But listen, one day they're all going to look back and say Conor McGregor fought on an Ode Osborne card. And coming up this weekend, the Jamaican sensation, the podcaster himself, Ode Osborne, the former teacher, is going to be taking on Energy Charles Johnson. Charles Johnson is last time out. Welcome the returning Jimmy Flick. And he bricked him. Looked really good. And he looked really good in that matchup. His striking was on point. He mixed in his kicks with his boxing, with his wrestling, with his defensive grappling. And all of a sudden, he's going out there, getting the ground and pound TKO win, where the referee was just saving Flick from himself. And for Johnson, that really kind of got rid of the bad taste out of everybody's mouth. Coming off of his split decision win over Jagas Jumagulov, where... Majority of folks thought that Juma Gulov had won, and in the debut in the UFC in 2022 for Johnson, he was unsuccessful at getting the win over Uber prospect Mohamed Makayev. And even before that, if you consider his calendar year, and I'm going to talk about him in a little bit, but a big win over Carlos Mota, a guy who just could not pass a USADA test and got banished out of the UFC. But if you look at it for Charles Johnson, we know he has a pro boxing record. We know it's 1-5-4. and four. We know he's a Golden Gloves champ, but... It's not necessarily that he is a boxer or that he was a steeplechase champ. It's the fact that he's a five-round fighter in three-round fights. He has good cardio. He's starting to really put all of his skills together in the MMA cage. And in a fight like this where he's going to be in an advantage for height, not for the reach, this matchup between both of these guys is really going to come down to who can lead the dance. It will. This is going to be a really interesting matchup because for Ode Osborne... He gets clipped at the worst possible times, and I just mean that throughout his whole entire career. I don't just mean isolated fights, because once Ode Osborne, or at least me, once I start to believe in Ode Osborne, that like, okay, top 15 Osborne, he does get finished in a really brutal way, and then it completely changes my whole entire opinion of him, but the positives are still there for Osborne. He's a very long-range striker. He himself has tremendous power when he is able to land, especially when he's able to land first. The thing is, though, Osborne's one of these strikers, and I will be curious to see what the range of this fight is, because he has great power power at his Goldilocks zone on the outside, but when guys are able to crash that distance, make him feel a little bit uncomfortable, he will start to wing that one wild shot, try to move his head a lot on the outside, and the thing about that is, it can be positive when you are actually able to evade some of those shots, but the problem is, when you keep your head down and just try to move a lot with your shoulders and your head, it's going to make you more susceptible to the big shot, and I do think that if Johnson's able to get his combinations going, because that's the thing, we might scoff at what his boxing record is, but if the question is, is Charles Johnson a good MMA boxer? Yeah, I, I would say so. He has good combinations. He can switch stances. Again, I don't know if I'll favor him at range with a guy like Osborne, because Osborne does have genuinely high-level power when he is able to land. I'm just going to be curious to see how is Osborne going to deal with some of the volume of Johnson, because again, Osborne could be that guy who's going to load up for the one big power shot, then try to move his feet and replant them. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to have that level of success in this matchup against Johnson. Osborne had a lot of success in his last fight against Tyson Nam. Now, Osborne was a big favorite in that match. Yeah. Up too, and I remember saying, hey, if Tyson Am's able to go out there, cut the cage, throw the hooks, he's going to have a really good night. I picked Osborne in the matchup. What happened? Osborne goes out there. He's going head. He's going body. He's making Nam miss. And then all of a sudden, Nam's able to cut the cage, land a right hook, and drop Ode Osborne. And that's the end of the fight. So for Osborne in the UFC, it's been really weird. And the other thing that should be mentioned, this fight was originally supposed to be Ode Osborne versus Dennis Bondar. And it was announced on February 14th by Alex Bakunin that Charles Johnson would be taking Taken on short notice. Johnson fought a little over a month ago against Jimmy Flick. Before that, just a few months ago against Jalgas Shumagulov. And if you look at it for Ode Osborne in the UFC, and if you look at it for Ode Osborne in his overall career, he's had a weird run between divisions. So Osborne's career is 2 and 2 at flyweight, he's 6 and 3 at bantamweight. And he's 3-0 and with a no contest at featherweight. I don't know if flyweight is the division for Ode Osborne, but who am I to say? Well, it does look to hurt his durability, the weight cut. And that does concern me in this matchup against Johnson. Not that Johnson's some thunderous puncher when he does land, but if he hurts Osborne because Osborne is one of these guys who, again, if he gets hurt, he's not going to go down immediately, but he doesn't recover all that well. And if he does get hurt and finds himself up against the cage, Johnson can easily land a flurry and really hurt him from that position. So again, I do agree with you. I've always worried about Osborne at this weight class, even though, like you pointed out at the start of the video, Johnson will be the bigger fighter, at least height-wise, in this matchup. Like, these are 
are two of the bigger flyweights you will see in the UFC. I'm really eager to see this one, folks, because I have a hard time picking this one. Both guys struggle with takedown defense, but they're both good at scrambling off their backs. Both guys are susceptible to getting caught in submissions, but for the most part, they're pretty good at getting their way out of it. I know you might have lasting impressions of Odie Osborne against Brian Kelleher at 135. That's a really tricky fight for most guys. His fight against Manel Kopp, where Kopp weighed heavy, and then went out there and knocked him out. For Charles Johnson, the last loss to Makayev, where he just got ground out for the large That's gonna percentage happen. of that one. So, you look at this one for the guy out of the, and I want to make sure I get it right, the Wagwan podcast for Odie Osborne, the Jamaican sensation's last guest there. UFC light heavyweight champion Champ, Jamal Hill. So good for Odie Osborne going out there, doing a damn thing on YouTube. Jordan Levitt's on this card. He reads books on the internet, and that's good too. So Matt, when you look at the odds in the matchup, Charles Johnson's decent favorite, I guess. Almost a 2-1 to favorite in the matchup. We have a look at the top topology vote. Surprise to us there to you. Johnson's not a big thunderous puncher. I don't know if the fans are all going to be going with him, even with the recency bias of one guy winning by finish and one guy losing by finish. I think it's going to be a little closer than that. I'm going to say over under 60. Seven and a half percent Johnson. I'll say over. I'm going to say over. It's over because the early voters are like that. 511 total votes, 83% Johnson, 44% by decision, 46% by knockout. For the 17% that have Osborne, 67% by decision. Odie Osborne, if I'm not mistaken, you guys are going to have the graphic in front of you. 99, yeah, three of his 17 fights have gone to decision against Vergara, Galloway, and Sanchez. So not a lot of decision fights for Ode Osborne. I'll be honest, going into this video, I really felt like I was going to pick Ode Osborne. I like the power that he's able to demonstrate on the outside. He does have tremendous hand speed too. That's the thing about Osborne. If you are just kind of waiting on the outside, kind of looking in the mirror, not throwing anything, and he's able to just charge up one of his big shots, you're going down if he lands it. Like, I don't really care who you are at this weight class, but you had brought it up and it was a point that I really wanted to hammer home or hammer home on this episode. I just don't love where Ode Osborne's durability is at 125. I think he's a big guy who does cut a decent amount of weight to get to this weight class. With Johnson, he is similar physically. I still think the weight cut has the same draining effects on him that it does on Osborne. So for those reasons, I do ever so slightly have Charles Johnson. But again, like I said, going into this video, I really did think I was going to pick Ode Osborne. But again, the cut down to 125 really does concern me for him. So uh, I guess I'll be curious to see how he looks on Friday. Like if Will Chope fought Cole Miller. What Two an big odd guys. world that could be. But Matt, for me in this matchup, I'm ever so slightly going with a former flyweight champ from the LFA in Charles Johnson as well. But my reasoning is because he's able to mix in those kicks with the, the boxing that he has. Odie Osborne is a much better long-range striker. And he throws from odd angles. He gets himself in and out. And Johnson's one of those guys that sometimes he can have a hard time crowding these fighters. But what I do like out of Johnson is he throws a lot of teeth kicks. He'll turn it into a front kick. And he will mix in the leg kicks as well. And then all of a sudden, he kind of holds his hands like a Rock'em Sock'em robot but he really gets him out there quick so for me i like the durability i like the kicks out of a guy like johnson i think this is a really tough fight you're not wrong until saturday night on a pick like this so i'd really like to hear from the comment section Should be a fun fight. on this one maybe it's a switch for a pick on question mark kicks but for now both of us going with charles johnson to get the win in the matchup training a little bit out of tiger muay thai for this one he was a scholarship winner over there a few years ago and he's training for this fight there as well so big time matchup in this flyweight division ever changing some big time fights left on this card. Krilov taking on Span in the main event. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.